In this video, I'm going to explain how to calculate the slope of this beam at point A using the conjugate beam method. Let's start by outlining the steps involved in using this method. The basic idea is to convert the real beam to an equivalent conjugate beam by changing the beam segment's boundary conditions. How do we do this conversion? By using this table. For example, as you can see here, a free end in the real beam converts into a fixed end in the conjugate beam. A fixed end converts into a free end. An interior pin or roller converts into an internal hinge, and so on. We then draw the moment diagram for the real beam. Divide the moment values by EI, then place the M over EI diagram as a distributed load on the conjugate beam. According to the conjugate beam method, slope in the real beam is the same as shear in the conjugate beam, and deflection in the real beam is equal to moment in the conjugate beam. Since in this problem we want to determine the slope at A, we need to calculate the shear force in the conjugate beam at point A. To start, we need to draw the moment diagram for the real beam. To do so, we are going to calculate the support reactions at A and B. Here is the free body diagram for the beam. And here are the reaction forces. Now we are ready to draw the shear and moment diagrams. Here is the shear diagram, and here is the moment diagram. We now need to convert the moment diagram to a distributed load to be placed on the conjugate beam. This is done by dividing M by EI. Since moment is negative, we treat this as a downward force on the conjugate beam. Okay. What does the conjugate beam look like? According to our table, the pin at A remains a pin. The roller at B turns into an internal hinge. and the free end at C becomes a fixed support in the conjugate beam. Let's place the M over EI diagram as a distributed load on the conjugate beam. Here, we want to determine the slope of the real beam at A. Therefore, we need to calculate the shear at A in the conjugate beam. By the way, the shear at A is the same as the vertical reaction at A, so we need to calculate the vertical reaction at A. Since there is a hinge at B, the quickest way to solve the problem is to cut the beam at the hinge, draw the free body diagram for segment AB, then write and solve the equilibrium equations for the unknown forces. Here is segment AB. There is an unknown reaction force at A and an unknown shear force at B. Since B is hinged, bending moment at that point is zero. Before we write the equilibrium equations, let's divide the distributed load into triangular and rectangular loads, then replace each with its equivalent concentrated load. The M over EI diagram can be divided into two triangular loads and one rectangular load. Now replace each distributed load with its equivalent concentrated load placed at the center of the load area. The area of this triangle is 35 over EI, and its center is 1.33 meters away from point A. The area of this triangle is also 35 over EI, and its center is 0.67 meters away from point B. The area of this rectangle is 50 over EI and its center is one meter away from point B. 
So here is segment AB subjected to the concentrated loads. Now we are ready to write the equilibrium equations. Here, since we are interested in calculating VA only, we need just one equation. The sum of the moments about point B must be zero. Solving this equation for VA, we get... This means the slope of the real beam at A is 41.7 over EI. The positive sign means the beam rotates counterclockwise at A. Here is a graphical representation of the result.